I welcome everybody in another session during Ramadan, a live session. And today's session is about dhikr, remembering Allah or mentioning Allah. It's been translated into two different ways. Dhikr is one of the greatest acts of worship by virtue of which a slave, he or she, draws near to Allah Azza wa Jal, which is done and can be done during all times and in all places. However, it becomes more emphasized during virtuous places, uh, times and in virtuous places. One such situation is Ramadan. And the distinct thing about dhikr is that it is the only act of worship which Allah Azza wa Jal commanded us to perform it abundantly. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, udhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. O you who have believed, remember Allah with abundant remembrance. Mention Allah a lot and frequently. Ibn Kathir quoted a statement from Ibn Abbas regarding this, uh, this verse. He said, Allah Azza wa Jal had set a specific number or limit for all acts of worship, where it is known when and how and how much it is to be performed, the other acts of worship. And he gave excuses for people who were unable to perform it or who are unable to perform it. However, with dhikr, Allah Azza wa Jal did not do that. Allah Azza wa Jal left no ceiling for this and did not give any excuse for people. He didn't leave any excuse. He said, الَّذِينَ يَذْكُرُونَ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقُعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ those who mention Allah while standing up and while sitting down and whilst lying down on their sides. So it is something that is performed during the day, during the night, on land, in air, in sea, whilst traveling, whilst at your residence, wh whether you're rich, you're poor, whether you're healthy, whether you're sick, in secret, openly, in all situations. And this is just to encourage people to do it and to reflect the importance of such an act of worship. And in return, for those who adhere to the commandment of Allah Azza wa Jal and abundantly mention Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, He had prepared a very distinct reward for those who perform dhikr. Those who mention and remember Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah says, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ You remember me, you mention me, and I will mention you. How? The details of this mentioning of Allah, of us, is given in a prophetic narration in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet ﷺ said, يَقُولُ اللَّهُ Allah Azza wa Jal says, which means this is a, a Qudusi narration. In a long one, a part of it, Allah Azza wa Jal says, and when he mentions me to himself, I mention him to myself. And when he makes mention of me in a gathering, I make mention of him in a gathering better than his. Meaning, Allah Azza wa Jal boasting about you to about the angels. What a status. It is indeed a distinct status. Ibn al-Qayyim rahmatullah alayhi said, if there was no other virtue for dhikr than this, then it would have been enough virtue and honor for the one who performs it. Now, in order to highlight the, the uh, importance of dhikr, the Prophet ﷺ gave a similitude 
to those who mention Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, Imam Bukhari reported that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the similitude of the person who mentions Allah, his Lord, Rabbahu, who mentions his Lord, and the one who does not mention his Lord is like that of a living person and a dead one. So the similitude here is reflecting actually the state of the heart. Because the state of the heart, when one mentions Allah Azza wa Jal, is definitely going to be a living, beating heart with faith and the light of faith. Whilst those who do not mention Allah, who do not perform dhikr, their hearts are hard and nearly dead due to the negligence of the mention of Allah Azza wa Another distinct quality about dhikr is that it takes the place of other acts of worship. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Abu Nu'aym and classified as authentic by Al-Albani. He said, if one becomes stingy and holds his wealth, holds back, he doesn't want to spend, and does not want to go through the difficulty and hardship of waking up, waking up at night, meaning standing in prayer, then let him abundantly recite Subhanallah and Alhamdulillah. As if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, is saying that this dhikr will suffice you from having to stand up if you can't or if you don't want to. Laziness. Now this is not a call here to become lazy. But this is just to give a similitude or a comparison. And those who don't want to spend. Another narration which is uh, reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. Abu Huraira said, A group of poor people came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, complaining, heartbroken, saddened, grieved. They said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah. Those with wealth have preceded and taken advantage of their wealth and reached high levels and great bliss. They pray just like we pray. So we're equal in this. And they fast just like we fast. So we're also equal in this. However, they have more money than them which they use to perform Hajj, and perform Umrah, and perform Jihad, and spend in charity. Meaning by virtue of their money, their wealth, they're able to perform other acts of worship, which we poor people cannot because we cannot afford. We cannot afford, we don't have the money to perform Hajj and Umrah and Jihad because Jihad required money. And it does require money until now. And spending op optional charity is something that requires money so you can be spending it. So we don't have that. So they mentioned acts of worship. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Should I not tell you something? That if you act upon it, you will reach their ranks and precede them. You'll beat them. And no one will be able to catch up with you except for those who do the like of which you do. And you will be better than them unless they do what you do. He said, you say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, after every salah, 33 times each. So in this hadith, the Prophet wasallam gave them dhikr, compared on the other side, 
huge rewarded, hugely rewarded acts of worship, Umran, Hajj, and Jihad, and charity in general. Hajj expiates everything that's behind it. You go back, like the Prophet ﷺ said, like the day your mother gave birth to you. Umrah, from one Umrah to the other, it expiates everything in between. Jihad, the Prophet ﷺ said, there is nothing like jihad in Islam. No reward can reach the reward of jihad. And then the general or optional charity is also highly rewarded by Allah Azza wa All of that, he said, if you can't do that, then do this. You'll catch up with those who do these magnificent acts of worship. And you will precede them. And no one will be able to catch up with you except for those who do what you do. Now, Allah Azza wa Jal made dhikr a means of cleansing the heart. You know, due to sins, uh, negligence, heedlessness, being so involved in dunya, in this worldly life, whether lawfully or otherwise, the heart becomes rusty and it needs to be cleaned every once in a while, every very short once in a while, for that matter. So Allah Azza wa Jal made dhikr a means of cleansing the heart. Abu Darda radiallahu anhu said, everything has something to clean it with, to remove this rust, this layer of rust on it. He said, and the means of cleansing the heart is dhikrullah, is mentioning Allah Azza wa Jalla. These were some of the benefits one gets from mentioning Allah Azza wa Jalla and some of the virtues. And there are more. For example, it results in the tranquility of the heart. The reassurance of the heart. Allah Azza wa Jal says, "Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub." Indeed, by virtue of the mention of Allah Azza wa Jal, hearts are reassured; they're tranquil. You feel you feel peace in your heart. Whenever you sit and start mentioning Allah, Subhanallah, you feel that you're living in a different world. The state of mind, the state of heart is totally different. This, this word peace, you actually feel it everywhere in your body. It results in the forgiveness of the slave and in a great reward. Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ أَعَدَّ اللَّهُ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةً وَأَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Those Female and male, both. This is addressing both, females and males. Those females and males who abundantly mention Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah Azza wa Jal has prepared for them forgiveness and an abundant reward. One can mention Allah Azza wa Jal alone or can be in a, in a gathering where the mention of Allah Azza wa Jal is made, and mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal takes different forms, one of which is Quran. The scholars also included the circles, study circles or circles of knowledge when people are sitting and learning. And this form has a particular reward. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is reported by Muslim. He said, whenever a group of people sit, and mention Allah as the details we just gave, the different forms of uh, dhikr. Except that angels will surround them. And mercy will descend upon them. And tranquility will descend upon them. Now, a question which I have no answer to right now. Are we considered to, to be included in this? 
I can't confirm based on anyone's statement, but I say that the bounty and favor of Allah Azza wa is abundant. And we hope that we are included in this hadith, inshallah. Uh, when someone tells you, oh, minister so-and-so mentioned you, and he highly praised you in the presence of the directors of that ministry, or president so-and-so, or king so-and-so, or prince so-and-so, or leaders, whatever, made mention of your name. You, he mentioned you by name. And not only that, he mentioned you to praise you and he praised you in the presence of everybody in his cabinet. You would feel honored and flattered that I was mentioned by name, by His Majesty, His Highness, me? Subhanallah. How would the situation be when Allah is the one who's making mention of my name and yours? And in the presence of not just anyone, the angels, and not just a normal way of mentioning, boasting about you. Allah Azza wa mentions you and me when we mention him subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, it is mentioned in the book of an Imam Muslim. Uh, that the Prophet ﷺ came out one day and he noticed that the companions عنهم, were gathering. He said, what made you gather like this, sit like this? They said, nothing, we just sat down to mention Allah Azza So the Prophet ﷺ gave them glad tidings. He said, Jibreel came to me, he descended. And he said that Allah the Almighty is boasting about you in front of the angels. Allah is bragging about me and you. Allah brags about me and you when we mention Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, the deserving of all and best and perfect praise, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this reflects the honor of this act of worship, dhikr. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by Al-Albani. Uh, he said, there is no act of worship, no deed, the son of Adam will perform, which will be more towards his rescue from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal than dhikr of Allah, than mentioning Allah the Almighty. Nothing will work towards your salvation, your rescue and mine on the day of judgment from the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that is, severe, that is severe, more than dhikrullahi Azza wa Jal. Ramadan, fasting, towards the last of the day, just before we break the fast, all of these are uh, means of our supplications being answered. Add to that what the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. And this is reported by Bayhaqi classified as Hassan Sound by Al-Iman. He said there are three types of people whose supplications are not rejected. And he mentioned one of them, those who mention Allah abundantly. That's why it is recommended that prior to supplicating Allah Azza wa Jal, you praise Allah Azza wa Jal. And praising Allah is a form of, of dhikr. Asking forgiveness, because asking for forgiveness is a form of dhikr. So, there we go. Another means of answering your supplications by mentioning Allah Azza wa It removes hardships and difficulties. <clears throat> Allah Azza wa Jal says about Yunus alayhi salatu wa salam, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَّذِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُ Had he not been one of those who praised Allah, said tasbih, as we know the dua of Yunus 
in the belly of the whale. لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. What was going to happen? Allah said He would have stayed in its belly until they were the day they were res they resurrected. So it relieved Yunus alayhi salatu wasalam. It removed that hardship, and it was removed by virtue of that victory. You want angels to uh, plant trees, put the seeds of trees for you and me. Well, dhikr is the means. They continue to do that as long as me and you mention Allah Azza wa The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and in, it's in the, mentioned in the famous narration of Al-Isra and Al-Iraq, this is reported by Tirmidhi, and classified as sound by al -Ibani. He said, I met Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam on the night I ascended to the heavens. He said, O oh Muhammad, greet your ummah with salam from me and tell them that Jannah is pure, is good, and its soil is good and sweet is its water and that it is flat, treeless plain. It is a flat, treeless plain. And that its seeds is saying, SubhanAllah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illallah, Allah Akbar. So every time you say this, a seed is planted for you. So how many trees do we want? That's up to me and you, and how abundant we want to mention Allah Azza Ibn Qayyim, commenting on this narration, said, So long as you're mentioning Allah Azza wa angels are planting seeds for you in the soil of Jannah. They're busy planting for me and you. And the, mo the moment you stop, or the second you stop, they refrain, they stop. So, the more you mention, the more you get trees planted for you in general. And one of the people of knowledge said once, having a house or having trees planted in your name in Jannah means you're going to enter Jannah. Or else, what's the point of having an, a house in your name or a tree planted in your name and you not entering Jannah. We ask Allah and Firdaus al A'la in Jannah. For all of us, our parents, our spouses, our children, and all our loved ones. Allahumma. However, there is a very important point which Ibn al Qayyim uh, highlighted when talking about dhikr. And uh, Ibn Khayyim had a, a, a beautiful piece of work when he spoke about uh, dhikr. Uh, he said, the best and the most beneficial type of dhikr is that when one performs whilst his heart is present and conscious of what he's seeing. Meaning, whilst you're attentive, so you're not just saying subhanAllah, 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 Like, it's, it's reported that uh, Ali radiallahu anhu saw a man saying astaghfirullah, 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 like this very fast. He said, ya hadha, inna istighfaraka ihtaju ila istighfar. He said, the way you're uttering istighfar requires that you say istighfar for the way you're saying it. Meaning, be attentive. Be mindful of what you're saying when you mention Allah Azza wa Jal. Let your heart be present so that it will reflect on you and then you'll feel and enjoy the state we mentioned earlier of this tranquility and peace of mind and reassurance of the soul. Now, we mentioned a lot here that وَالذَّاكِرِينَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا وَالذَّاكِرَاتِ Those who, men and, and women, males and females, who abundantly mention Allah. How do we get this description? 
to match our actions. How do we fit into this description? Well, people of knowledge said, whoever wants to be described as a person who abundantly mentions Allah Azza wa then he has to follow into the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is our role model Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So how is his situation? Aisha radiallahu anha described to us, and this is reported by Muslim. She said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to mention Allah, recite dhikr, in all his situations. Well, that's when you become abundantly remembering and mentioning Allah Azza wa So, what does that mean? Morning and evening at God, that's not enough alone. That's part of the deal. You mention Allah Azza wa Jal in every situation like the Prophet used to do. You eat before and after, you drink before and after, you sleep before and after, you get into the bathroom before and after, you dress before and after. How is after? You say Bismillah so the jinn and the shayateen do not see your awl. Intercourse with the wife or with the spouse, everything. Salah, Adhan, walking out of the house, walking into the house, Get into the, getting into the car. In every situation, there is a mention legislated for us to recite. And when one gets himself used to adhering to all of these situations, mentioning Allah Azza wa Jal in all of these situations, then he would be described as a person who abundantly mentions Allah Azza wa Jal. And then, if you want to precede people and go beyond the norm, then you add to that. Like, subhanAllah wa or la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika lah. The, the legislated mention. In the narrations, the Prophet ﷺ said, no one would be able to get this reward except for a person who said that or added to it. So no one can catch up with you unless he says what you do, what, what you said, and if he wants to precede you and beat you into, into this race, then he has to say and recite. Ramadan is a golden opportunity. And Corona is a golden opportunity if we properly utilize it. We're forced to stay home, it gives us more time we can mention Allah Azza wa Jal much more than we were able had we had to go to work or attend to other things in life.